Tonight here on 21, Herbert Stemple, our 29-year-old GI college student, can win $111,500, the highest amount of money ever to be won on television. But to do this, he's risking much of the money he has won thus far. So right now, let's meet our first two players as Geritol, America's number one tonic, presents 21. From New York City, Mr. Charles Van Doren, and returning with $69,500 from Forest Hills, New York, Mr. Herbert Stemple. Gentlemen, welcome back to 21. Your two smiling faces here tonight after that hectic battle you were involved in last week. I'm sure we're in for tremendous excitement here in the program. How are you tonight, Mr. Van Doren? I'm all right. You're you. okay? Yeah. And Herb, you got your $69,500 riding here at stake. How do you feel, okay? That's fine, thank you. Good enough. Herb, there has been some uh, question raised as to whether or not you knew before going into this game that should there be tie games occur as they have that so much more of your money would be risked. I mean, for instance, right now we're going to be playing for $2,000 a point. Were you aware that this would, this would happen, could happen? Uh, sure I was, Mr. Barry. I knew it all along since I've been in the game to start with. And as a matter of fact, I have played several tie games. Uh, one uh, with Dr. Caballo. And That's right, you did. Also with this uh, Miss uh, Strong. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm putting an awful lot of money on the line. I'm certainly risking an awful lot of money, but by the same token, I can win a lot of money, too, which is also very important. Yes, indeed you can. You can win or lose a lot. All I wanted to make perfectly clear was that you knew certainly that this could possibly happen. You had no way to know that it would happen, but that it could possibly happen, as it did with Dr. Carbio. That is right, Mr. Barry. Right, Herb, but I hope we cleared that up for some of the viewers who have wondered about it. And if you two fellows are ready, uh, may I caution you once again that tonight it will be the biggest game we've ever played here in the program. $2,000 a point. Be very, very careful before you answer. Take your time. And the very, very best of luck to both of you. Neither player inside the studios can hear anything until I turn their studios on with switches which I control right here in front of me, nor can they see anybody in the television studio audience because of the way the lights are constructed. Can you hear me, Mr. Van Doren? Yes, I can. Very good. I have your studio on. Your studio is on, Herb. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. Now, we're going to go on trying to get 21. I'll be back to you in just a moment, Herb. Now, Mr. Van Doren, I guess you know pretty well from last week how to play this game. You've got to try to score 21 points. You do it by answering questions that have a point value from 1 to 11. The high point questions are much more difficult than the lower point questions. And you'll tell us how much you know about the category by grading yourself from 1 to 11. The first category, the Civil War. How much do you know about it? You tell us from 1 to 11. That's an awful big subject. Uh, I'll try for 8 points. For 8 points. Because of a disagreement with his commanding general, Ulysses Grant was virtually placed under arrest for a brief time early in 1862. Who was the commanding general of the Union Army at that time? Oh, yes. Um, I know his name. Uh, Halleck. General H.W. Halleck. You're right. You have eight points. Herb Stemple, $69,500 is at stake. At $2,000 a point, of course, the winner will get the difference at the end of this match in your scores at $2,000 a point. The category is the Civil War. How many points do you want? I'll try nine. For nine points. Because he did not sanction secession, this man was the only Southerner who refused to leave the United States Senate when his state seceded from the Union in June of 1861. Name him and the state he represented. Andrew Johnson of Tennessee. You're right, you have nine points. <laughs> Mr. Van Dorn, you have eight points. The category is boxing. How many points do you want from one to 11? Uh, I'm not sure I should do this. Uh, I'll try for nine points. For nine points. Name the three heavyweight champions immediately preceding Joe Lewis. Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, Lewis defeated uh, James J. Braddock. And before Braddock was 
um, Max Baer. And before Baer was either Max Schmeling or Primo Carnera. Let's see, uh, uh, either Schmeling. Was it Schmeling? No, I'm sorry, it was Primo Carnera. I'm sorry, you lose nine points, that you don't go below zero, we put you back to zero, and better luck on the next round. Herb Stemper, you have nine points. The category is boxing. How many do you want to try for? Seven. For seven points, one of the most famous promoters in boxing history, the man who promoted the first million dollar gate, is largely responsible for price fights being staged out of doors. Name this man. Tex Record. Right, you now have 16 points. Gentlemen, I want to caution you not to speak now because this is the one point when you can be heard. This is the spot you know before we've reached 21 when you get a chance to stop the game. If either of you want to stop the game, you can do so, but I caution you not to do it, particularly at $2,000 a point, unless you really think you are leading at this point. If either of you stops the game, whoever has the high score at this point will win $2,000 a point for the difference in your scores. If neither of you want to stop, we'll then continue on to 21. I'm going to give you some time to think it over. If either player stops the game now, Herb Stemple, who is leading by 16 points at $2,000 a point, will win $32,000 more, bringing him up to $101,500. But he doesn't know it because they do not know each other's scores. Let's see what happens. If either of you want to stop the game, you must tell me so right now. No? Neither of you. All right, gentlemen. I'm, uh, I think I need a breather more than you do, so suppose we take time out here for just a second while I talk to the people, and then we'll continue on with our game of 21. Please don't talk, because your studios are both on the air. Oh, questions, questions. I guess I've asked thousands of questions at one time or another here on television. I don't, I'm not used to it yet, but there is one simple question that I think almost everybody asks everybody else. I think you know the question. What's the weather going to be like? Well, from the reports that we have had from all around the country, and especially right here in New York, it's been hot and cold and unseasonable, and it looks like we're really in for a tough, rough winter. And I think you know what that means, too. It means plenty of sickness. So will you remember, if you feel tired and run down, and especially after a cold, flu, sore throat, or virus, you may suffer from iron deficiency anemia. That's a very fancy term for what we call tired blood. Tired blood. You check with your doctor, and to feel stronger fast, take Geritol. In just 24 hours, Geritol iron is in your bloodstream, carrying strength and energy to every part of your body. Just two tablespoons of liquid Geritol, or two of the Geritol tablets, contain twice the iron in a pound of calf's liver. So remember, if tired blood is your problem, especially in this rough weather after those colds or flu or sore throat of the virus. Take either the good tasting liquid Geritol or the handy Geritol tablets and take it every day. Believe me, you'll feel stronger fast within seven days or you get your money back. All right, gentlemen, we're going on now to 21. Herb, I'll be back to you in just a moment. Mr. Van Doren, you have no points at the present. The category is movies and movie stars. How many points do you want from 1 to 11? I think I should take about 7, but I just can't risk it. Uh, I'll try for 10 points. For 10 points, one of the tough questions. In 1954, the Oscars for Best Supporting Actress, Best Director, and Best Story and Screenplay Writer all went to people who had worked in the film On the Waterfront. Name these people. Well, the, uh, the director was Elia Kazan. That's uh, right. And the writer was uh, what's his, uh, Schulberg. Right. Uh, Bud Schulberg. And the best supporting actress? Um, well, the only woman I can remember in that picture was the one who played opposite Brando. Uh, but, but I would have thought that she would have got the best actress award. Uh, and she's the only one I can remember. Let's see. She 
Uh, that she's the only one I can remember. Let's see, she was that lovely, frail girl. Eva Saint, uh, Eva Marie Saint. Right, you have yeah. 10 points. Herb Stemple, you have 16 points. The category is movies and movie stars. How many points do you want to try for from 1 to 11? I'll try 5. Which would give you 21 points if you get this right, and you will be the winner again. Because this is a critical moment, if you need some extra time, you can have it. You ask, let me make it sure again, you ask for 5 points. All right. What motion picture won the Academy Award for 1955? You need some extra time to think about it? Uh, I sure do. I'll tell you when your time is up. Your time is up, Herb Stemple, for five points, which would give you 21. What motion picture won the Academy Award for 1955? Sure, it's not on the waterfront, but that's the only film I remember. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't okay. remember. You really want to take a guess at it? If not, I'll have to on, call it wrong, Herb. On the waterfront? No, I'm sorry. The answer is Marty. Marty. You lose five points. It puts you back down to 11. Better luck on the next round. Mr. Van Doren, you have 10 points. The category, Explorers. Explorers. How many points no. do you want to try for? I'm going to go all the way to 21. Let me, let me try for 11 points. You want to try to hit 21 by, yeah. 11, by answering an 11-point question? That's right. All right. If you do answer this, you'll have 21, but you'll still have to wait for Herb Stemple to get another crack at it. Yeah. And you can have some extra time if you need it. Here is your question. Pizarro, P-I-Z-A-R-R-O was an early Spanish explorer who discovered and conquered an advanced civilization. Tell us the civilization he discovered, the country this civilization was in, and the leader of the civilization at the time of the conquest. Would you like time to think it over? As much as you can spare. I'll tell you when your time is up. Time is up. Um, Tell us the civilization he discovered, first of all, if you can, or take it any order, uh, well, any order uh, you want. Yes, I, uh, Pizarro uh, discovered the Incas. Right. And the Incas uh, uh, lived in Peru. You are right, and the leader of the civilization, which would give you 21 points if you get this right. Yes, well, let's see, there was this fellow named Monco. Um, oh, he was, he was crowned by Pizarro, so he was a... But he had a brother, Atahualpa. That was a man who had a room full of gold losses. So I guess, I guess that uh, Atahualpa was the leader of the Incas at the time of the conquest. That's your answer, Atahualpa? That's right. Then you've scored 21 points. <laughs> Mr. Van Doren, yeah. you have the desired number of points, 21, but Herb Semple still has to get a chance at it. Now I'm going to allow you to listen in, so please do not speak. Herb Stemple, you have 11 points. The category, ex Explorers. How many points do you want to try for from 1 to 11? I'll try 10. You're going to try to go to 21? Yes. I can tell you now that your opponent has already scored 21 points. If you answer this next question correctly, you'll have 21 and we'll have another tie, which means we'll have to play another game at $2,500 a point. If you miss, of course, he will win, and I'm not even going to bother to figure it up because it's quite gigantic. Here is your question, and take your time. You can have some extra time if you need it. Four great voyages were made by Christopher Columbus, and many different places were among his discoveries. Tell us on which voyage, the first, second, third, or fourth, each of the following places was discovered. The Virgin Islands, Martinino or Santa Lucia, Hispaniola or Haiti, and South America. Do you need some time to think this over, Herb Sample? Sure do. I'll tell you when your time is up. Your time is up.
goes up for 10 points, which will either give you 21 or put your way back down to about one point. Uh, four great voyages were made by Columbus. Different places were among his discoveries. Tell us on which voyage, the first, second, third, or fourth, each of the following places were discovered. You want to take a crack at the Virgin Islands? Um, I'll try uh, Hispaniola. All right. That was on the first voyage. You are right. South America was on the third voyage. That's right for the second part. Now, what are the other two now? Martinino, or Santa Lucia, and the Virgin Islands. Martinino is on the fourth voyage. That is right, and the Virgin Islands is the third. Virgin. Therefore, the Virgin Islands must be the second. You're right, and you are 21 points. <laughs> it's, happened, it's happened again. You both have 21 points. There is a tie. As you know, in the case of a tie, we play another game. The stakes go up. We're going to play in just a moment for $2,500 a point. Now, I can't even figure out how much this is, but one of you could win either $50,000 or somewhere around there, win or lose. And I think at this point, first of all, I want to say congratulations to both of you. I don't care who wins or who loses. You guys really know your onions. I want to... I really do. We're going we're gonna to take a moment out here now for you to settle down to get into this, which will be an even bigger game than the other. And while you relax a bit, and we all do, I'm going to call on my good friend Bob Shepard with some important and helpful news for, for anyone who is suffering from common rheumatic and arthritic-like pains. Bob? Well, thank you very much, Jack. Now, friends, an important new advance has been made in the relief of common rheumatic and arthritic-like pains due to stiff, aching joints. It's Zeramin. If common rheumatic and arthritic-like pains make it difficult to sew, walk, or move about, try Zeramin. A Zeramin must give you more freedom from these annoying pains or your money back. Now, this is a Zeramin pill, and it offers this new advance. It is actually a pill within a pill. And over here is a model of the pill. Now, as you can see, Zeramin contains an outer pill that gives fast, effective, temporary relief and an inner pill that brings more relief hours later, thus giving longer lasting relief. The result, once again, you are able to do the things that pain may have been preventing. Take Zeramin as directed. If pain persists, see your doctor. That's Zeramon at your drugstore now. Before we go on, I would like to say that all the questions that are used on 21 have been authenticated for their accuracy and the order of their difficulty by the editorial board of the Encyclopedia Britannica. Fellas, you all set? Mandarin, Herb Semple, $2,500 a point. Take it easy on this. Be very careful. I'll get back to you in a moment, Herb. All right, Mr. Van Doren, the first category, <laughs> newspapers. Newspapers. How many points do you want from 1 to 11? I'll try eight points. For eight points, grandsons of Joseph Medill, two of the most successful journalists in the country from 1914 on, were the owners and managers of the Chicago Tribune and the New York Daily News. Who were they? Well, the Chicago Tribune, that would be uh, Colonel Robert R. McCormick. You're right. And the Daily News, uh, wouldn't that be Patterson, Joseph Patterson? It would be, and you have eight points. <laughs> Herb Stemple, with your 69500 still at stake, although now at $2,500 a point, the category is newspapers. How many do you want to try for? I'll try 11. The toughest question of them all. One of the most revered names in American journalism is that of a Kansas newspaper publisher who died in 1944. Tell us this man's name, the name of his newspaper, and the title of the editorial he wrote, which made him and his paper nationally known. The name of the editor is William Allen White. That is right. That is right. His paper was the Emporia Gazette. That is right. 
Finally, for I'll, 11 points, I'll the have tight... To, I'll have to think a little bit about the third. Herb, you can take a little time. You go right ahead. It's the title of the editorial we want, which he wrote. It made his paper nationally famous and well-known. I don't know. No idea? Just want help to guess. I don't know. I beg your pardon? Just want help, help to guess. I don't know. I'm afraid I'm going to have to give it to you then, Herb. The editorial, the title was, What's the Matter with Kansas? I'm sorry you don't answer. You don't lose any points, but you stay at zero. Better luck on the next round. Mr. Van Doren, you have eight points. The category, Kings, K-I-N-G-S, Kings. How many mm. points do you want? I'll try for 10 points. For 10 points, it's well known that some of Henry VIII's six wives fared better than others. He divorced his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, married his sixth, Catherine Parr, just a few years before he died. Name the second, third, fourth, and fifth wives of Henry VIII and describe their fate. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you want me to name the second, third, fourth, fifth wives and what happened to all of them? That's right. Oh, I'll have to think a minute. Um... Uh, Catherine, you mentioned Catherine of Aragon. She was the first one. Now, the second one was uh, Anne Bullen. That's right. Uh, and of course, the poor woman was beheaded. That is right. Uh, now, the third, the third was Jane Seymour. Right. And I believe she died a natural death. She died in childbirth. Uh, that is right. Uh, after the birth of the future Edward VI. Um, the third, the fourth now. Right. Uh, let's see, the two Anne. Uh, Anne of Cleves. Right. And I don't think he beheaded her. Um, uh, did he divorce her? You'll have to tell me rather he, than He that. divorced her. He did. You're right. Finally, the fifth. Oh, the fifth. It's one more. Uh, one more. And James. Oh, I think that Henry VIII married three, three Catherines. Now... Uh, you, you mentioned uh, Catherine of Aragon. Who was the other Catherine uh, that you met? The sixth wife? Uh, Catherine Parr, was that the sixth one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Catherine Aragon, Catherine Parr. Catherine Howard. Right, and what happened to her? Yes, what happened to her? <laughs> uh, considering Henry VIII, he probably divorced her, the head of her, let's see. Uh, well, he... He divorced his friend. Did he behead Catherine Howard? He did. You've got 18 points. <laughs> Herb Semple, you have no points. The category is Kings, K-I-N-G-S. How many points do you want from 1 to 11? I'll try 10. I beg your pardon? 10. 10 points. It is well known that some of Henry VIII's six wives fared better than others. He divorced his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, married his sixth, Catherine Parr, just a few years before he died. Name the second, third, fourth, and fifth wives of Henry VIII and describe their fate. Second, third, fourth, and fifth? Right, and describe their fate. Anne Boleyn was the second. Right. Jane Seymour, the third. That is right. Anne of Cleves, the fourth. Right again. And Catherine Howard was the fifth. You're right. You've got all the, the names. Now, can you describe their fates? Well, they all died. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you how they died. I know what you meant, Mr. Anne, I know what you meant, Mr. Barry. I was just making a little fun. First Anne Boleyn. 
Anne Boleyn. Executed. Right. Jane Seymour. I'm not sure about her. You want to go on to Anne of Cleves? Yes. All right. Anne of Cleves. Divorced. Right. Catherine Howard. Catherine Howard. Executed. Right. And finally, back to Jane Seymour. Died in childbirth. You're right. You have three points. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm going to caution you now not to divulge your scores because you can hear each other. We're at the point now where you get a chance to stop the game. If either of you stops the game, whoever has the high score wins. So be very, very careful. I'm going to give you some time and I'll tell you when your time is up. <laughs> if either player stops the game right now, Mr. Van Doren, who is eight points ahead at $2,500 a point, will win back $20,000 from Herb Stemple. But he doesn't know it because they don't know each other's scores. Let's see what happens. If either of you want to stop the game, you must tell me so right now. I'll stop. Then you win $20,000. Congratulations, Mr. Van Doren. Congratulations, and while I'm saying that, I want to say, by golly, you've had a trem tremendous run here. Herb, you had 69500 when you started. You lost $29,000. you are still going home with $49,500, which is a big sum. Herb, in the few brief moments we have, what are you going to do with the dough? Well, Mr. Barry, um, this all came so suddenly. First thing I want to do is outfit my family, and... Uh, <coughs> I would also like to make a small contribution to the city college fund to repay the people of the city of New York for the free education which they've given me. And then I'm going to guard the rest of my money, put it in the bank, and I would also like to thank you and the members of your staff for all the kindness and the courtesy which you've extended to me. Herb, I want to say one thing. We may have a lot of contestants in the future, but I doubt that anybody will ever display the knowledge, the fighting spirit, and the courage that you have in this program. We, your friends, all the students at CCNY, I'm certain are just as proud of you as we are, and deservedly so. And thank, thank you, you for being a wonderful contestant. Herb Semple, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all. Well, he went home with $49,500. You've got $20,000 right now, Charles Van Doren. Come back next week. Tell us whether you want to continue playing or quit. Our congratulations for a wonderful Thank victory. You. Good night to Charles Van Doren, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Friends, we don't have time. Remember Jericho and Jericho Jr., wonderful products. Goodbye, everybody. See you next week.